Hello, my name is Angie Rizzi, and I'm talking about My NASA Data's creation of Urban Heat Island's Story Map. If you're not familiar with My NASA Data, it is a website that utilizes NASA data and visualizations and information in order to provide lesson plans and learning activities for students of grades 3 through 12. This site is designed for the teachers to find the information for them. It is organized by Earth System Phenomenon as well as by Earth Sphere and aligned with NGSS. So if you haven't heard of it before, I encourage you to check it out. We have a lot of great resources. If you have any questions following this presentation or about my NASA data in general, please reach out to me at angela.rizzi at nasa.gov. I'll be happy to get back with you. And you can always refer back to this slide for my email if you need it. So in order to access the story map, you can go to the main page for my NASA data, which is mynasadata.lark.nasa.gov. And you can use the search tool to search on either Urban Heat Island or Story Map, and you should easily find it. Alternatively, you can link directly to the Story Map using this link here. Because of the way Zoom works, I'm going to have to go into it a different way. But here it is. So I have the Urban Heat Island Story Map in my NASA data. And as you can see, it is a lesson plan for the teacher. So in addition to the actual story map, you have a lot of information here about your objectives, the NASA connections, the materials required, the technology, background information, etc. Information that's useful for the teacher. Then you can link out to the actual story map. And when you get to the story map, you can see these tabs along the top, and that's how it's organized. So in addition to the introduction, I think you can see that we have organized this lesson in the 5E model. So the students will go through engage, explore, explain, elaborate, and evaluate. And in addition, we have NASA connections, globe resources, and teacher resources. You can see here in the introduction that the purpose of this is to get them to explore the urban heat island effect. They're going to use surface temperature and vegetation data and investigate uh, the processes that would lead to urban heat islands. Their essential questions are why different materials experience differences in surface temperatures, what is the role of the urban heat island in Earth's energy budget, and how has human activity led to the creation of these urban heat islands. The tasks that they're going to be asked to do will be to make some line and bar graphs. They are going to make a claim about human activities in urban heat islands. They're going to make predictions about the temperatures of different surfaces and observe surface temperature differences between natural and built materials. Note here that at the end of the introduction, there's a link for the student sheets. As they proceed through the 5E model, all the questions that they're asked, the tables that they're asked to complete, and the graphs that they're asked to make have a place on these sheets so that they um, have somewhere to write this all down. That's also going to be available to you over in the teacher resources, so be aware of that. So once they proceed to the Engage tab, they're going to start off with these pictures that hopefully they can all relate to and they will answer some questions about it and indicate which temperatures they, which surfaces they think would be cooler. They are going to look at a graphic here that shows temperatures of different surfaces on the same day at the same time. They can pull up the GLOBE data visualization tool and find schools that have collected surface temperature data. They can click on those schools, see the information, as well as use the video here to do kind of a time progression. There are directions for them on how to do this. Then they can actually see the site for a GLOBE school, Shoemate Middle School and the data for that school. And they'll be answering questions about all of this. Before they finish the Engage tab, they can search on their own school, zoom in, 
and identify some different materials, different surfaces, whether they think they're artificial or natural, and rank them as far as what they think will be the hottest. And before they leave the Engage tab, they're gonna make a claim about how do they think human activities and construction affect surface temperatures. They don't have to be correct at this point. When they move into the Explore tab, there's a lot of great information for them. So the first thing they're gonna look at is they're gonna be looking at the urban area of Atlanta, Georgia, and they have this spyglass. And so in, on the inside of the spyglass, they see a satellite image, and outside they see surface temperature. The legend for the surface temperature is over on the left-hand side of the screen. They're gonna be asked to explore this. They can zoom in and find some different surfaces and find what they think the temperatures are based on the surface temperature and fill this out. Once they've filled out the table, they're gonna be asked to make a bar chart similar to this one here with the different surfaces that they've identified and the temperatures. After they complete the bar chart, they're going to look at the relationship between surface temperature and vegetation. The legends are here for them. So they can see the vegetation and they can see the surface temperatures and find whatever patterns they have. Now this profile here, they're gonna fill out. It's the urban heat island profile with different districts around an urban area. And this time they'll make a line graph and they have the data in the table and they will plot each point and connect it with a line. And they'll answer questions and indicate whether they think there's a proportional or inverse relationship between developed land and vegetation, surface temperature, et cetera, and cite their evidence for that. Once they do that, then they're going to look at population density in the urban heat island. This particular slider shows the population density and then it shows the um, difference in the urban temperature versus the surrounding areas. And so they can explore that and answer questions. Now we see that profile again, and we've got the day and night temperatures. They will probably notice here over the pond. So there are some questions about that. And you can explain to them about the heating of water. Then we have the option of going out to the Earth System Data Explorer, which is a visualization tool within my NASA data. We have to link out to it. Um, they're going to be asked to make what's called a longitude plot. So when you go first, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Say, okay. You will click on geosphere, then all data, then skin temperature, then daytime skin temperature. And a map will show up. You can hide the annotations if you want. I'm just going to quickly show you. You can do some things like zoom in on the map. You can change dates. Okay, you can do some different things. But we're going to make a longitude plot. And I've already plugged it in. This is what they should be getting. And what this longitude plot shows you is the different longitudes are on the x-axis, and this would all be at the latitude of 33.75 north. So at 33.75 north, as you go to different longitudes, you can see the different temperatures, okay? So that's one of the things that they're asked to do in this um, story map. Just wanted to show you that because some people get confused by that graph. And there are tutorials available to help you learn how to use the Earth System Data Explorer. Once they finish that, they'll go into the Explain tab. And this is where we're explaining the information to them. So there's a nice video on what is an urban heat island. There's vocabulary for them. We have information about Earth's energy budget. We have 
information about what is albedo and the albedo of things of different colors, how transpiration acts as a cooling agent, where her urban heat islands form. Again, there's that sort of urban profile there. Lots of information for them to read and questions for them to answer. And then we have information here about population growth and um, vegetated land. So that's the explain. Once they finish the explain, they'll go into elaborate. In the elaborate tool, we have this NOAA visualization tool that's going to help them explore some areas out in California where they're going to look at how the land has changed and in relation to actual development. So has it gotten more developed and how has the land changed? And then they're going to look at changes in population as they see that the urban populations are growing and the rural populations are declining. And then they're going to make a claim. What effect will urban growth have on the urban heat island effect? And they're going to use evidence from what they've done so far and their reasoning. The last part is the evaluate, and this is kind of fun. So we go back to Atlanta, Georgia with this, and they're going to be looking at the Peachtree Road Race. And in pink here, you can see the route for the race. And the students are going to be asked using this magnifier and what they know about the different um, surfaces to pick the best places along the route for the pedestrians to stand and observe. Again, the legend is here for them. And after that, they're going to be asked to design an experiment on the premise that the city planner has decided that to make the road race um, work for the pedestrians, they're going to try to cool the area by changing the material of the roofs in the area. And they're going to decide on a material that they think that they would maybe want to use and design an experiment to see if it would be effective. Okay. Um, if they have time, they can actually do their experiment. And then there is a graph available for them showing them some different roof types and temperatures so that they can see um, what has been found in real life. So that's the, the student part of the story map. We do have some NASA connection information here. We have the connection to my NASA data as well as the Earth System Data Explorer, why NASA studies the urban heat island and how NASA studies urban heat islands. We've got globe resources. So we've got information on globe in general, as well as the field campaign for surface temperature and the surface temperature protocol information. And then last but not least, the teacher resource where we have the lesson plan written out as well as those student sheets that I showed you earlier. So hopefully you're gonna be able to use this with your students and um, it will be a very valuable experience for them. And if you have any questions about the story map, about my NASA data, the Earth System Data Explorer or anything, please uh, reach out to me at angela.rizzi at nasa.gov. Thank you.